A disadvantage of some battery pulse chargers is the fact that it is thought that it's not possible to self-power the device nor to boost the running battery during the battery charging process. Here is one variation of a Bedini style pulse charger which does actually boost the driving battery as the circuit runs, as shown here. This is the rotor uh, with five sets, or perhaps, perhaps I should say five pairs, of magnets put at 72 degree intervals around the circumference. The magnets cover the full width of the rotor disc, which is quite thick, in almost two inches thick. That is 25 millimeters. This rotor is heavy because it was constructed from a series of discs cut from laminate flooring planks. The circuit is very simple and straightforward. You have a trigger winding here, which when a, a magnet passes by, causes current to flow through the base of a 2N3055 transistor, which then switches on and powers the drive coil, and the drive coil passes through the windings here and the switch to uh, charge the battery which is being charged here, and also it passes on through the drive battery, which is quite a useful arrangement. The rotor is about five pounds in weight, that's two kilograms. It's very heavy for its size because it's constructed from flooring laminate, which is a very heavy material. And the rotor has a thickness of 1.875 inches, that's 48 millimeters, to match the width of the magnets. There are 10 magnets, size 1.875 inches by 0.875 inches by 0.25 inches. That's 48 millimeters by 22 millimeters by 6 millimeters. Those magnets are assembled in pairs to produce the most evenly matched magnetic sets possible from the magnets that you have. That is, the strongest is put together with the weakest. The second most strong magnet is put with the second weakest magnet, and so on, to produce the five pairs of magnets, each being half an inch, that's 12 millimeters thick. These pairs are embedded in the rotor at equal 72 degree centers around the edge of the rotor. The circuit has got a micro switch which looks like this, uh, connected so that it, the lever arm is pushed by a, a projection on the edge of the rotor disc. It's placed halfway between two magnets, and the arrangement is interesting. It's got five magnets and two uh, facing coils, exactly 180 de degrees apart, which means that when this par pair of uh, coils are being energized by a magnet facing it, there will not be a magnet facing the one over here. There would have to be six magnets, or any other even number of magnets, for them both to be part at the same time. It's interesting that the uh, way that this is organized. When a magnet passes by this particular pickup coil, the pickup coil has a voltage generated in it, and that voltage is rectified, and energy is actually stored in the coil itself. Coils store energy in the same way that capacitors store energy. In fact, every coil has a capacitance. It's part of the characteristics of a coil. But this is the circuit as it is being used. The battery pulsing produced by the circuit is the same as used by John Bedini. As the rotor turns, the trigger winding energizes the 3055 transistor, which then drives a strong pulse through the winding shown in red and marked drive. The 
Voltage spike which occurs when the drive current is suddenly cut off would normally go to more than 200 volts in all likelihood. That is fed to the battery being charged and with the micro switch in the position shown and the normally closed contacts being actually closed, the actual current being generated is passed through the micro switch, through the charging battery and on through the drive battery. The charging of the batteries occurs to both of the two batteries shown and the same current flow goes through each of them because they're connected in series. This happens five times during a single revolution of the rotor and the flow path of the current is emphasized in green in this diagram. The capacitor, or sorry, the collector of the transistor marked C, uh, the voltage at C goes high if it was left unconnected, that voltage would go to probably more than 200 volts. But it is actually connected through the red wire uh, to the other battery. But anyway, the current flow comes from the 3055 through the 1N4007 diode to charge the battery which is under charge. But with the switch in this position, the actual flow continues on down through the drive battery and back to the earth line. This is uh, an interesting arrangement and it charges the driving battery provided the switch is in its normal closed position. And it will be in that position for nearly all of a rotation. You need to understand clearly how this circuit works. The drive coil marked in red is made up using 150 feet, that is 46 meters, of 0.812 millimeter diameter solid enamel copper wire. When the transistor switches off, its collector marked C goes very rapidly to a high voltage. However, the two batteries are in series and will have a combined voltage of perhaps 24 volts or lower. When the collector swings up past that voltage, it starts pouring current into both batteries and that pins the collector voltage down to about the combined voltage of the two batteries. There is a small voltage drop of about 0.7 of a volt across the diode, but that is of no consequence with the sort of high voltages that we're talking about here. The clever variation introduced is to position a pickup coil opposite the drive and charging coil. As there are five magnets, the drive charging coil is not in use when a magnet is passing the pickup coil. The driving circuit is not naturally act not actually active at this instant. So the micro switch is used to disconnect the circuit completely from the driving battery and connect the pickup coil to the driving battery. This feeds a charging pulse to the driving battery via the bridge of uh, 1N4007 1000 volt diodes. This is only done once per revolution and the physical position of the micro switch is adjusted to get the timing exactly right. It will be almost certainly halfway between two of the magnet sets in the rotor. The actual rotor is kept rotating by the magnetic field created in the drive coil just after the magnet passes by and the transistor switches off. Transistor switches off creates a magnetic pole at this end of the coil which this is the same as the magnetic pole facing outwards on the rotor and that's generally speaking a north pole. That creates a repulsion between the two magnets here, the one electromagnet 
and the one permanent magnet and that pushes the uh, rotor on around in its travel that keeps the rotor continuously rotating this arrangement produces a circuit which in addition to pul pulsing the battery being charged also causes the recharging current to the drive battery in passing I would be most surprised if this circuit couldn't charge two or maybe even three 12 volt batteries connected in series they are used to hold the voltage at the collector down and that is an important factor because a 2N3055 transistor has a maximum working voltage of 60 volts so with just one recharging battery you've got 24 volts with two recharging batteries connected in series you have got 36 volts and with f three batteries being charged and connected it to the drive battery you've got 48 volts and I wouldn't be inclined to go any higher than that with a transistor that's rated for only 60 volts I would also be inclined to connect a 60 volt 1000 microfarad capacitor across the plus and the minus of the diode bridge as I would expect that to pick up five times as much additional power from the passing magnets I would also be inclined to use at least three additional collection coils feeding the diode bridge however ideas like that are useless until tested and are actually working well the three extra coils would be positioned 72 degrees away from the pickup coil and 144 degrees away from the pickup coil and then another one at the far beyond that staying clear of the micro switch um, but you also could position the coils and the micro switch carefully so that you have all five magnets available to you and each of the pickup coils would get a magnet passing by five times for each single revolution of the rotor and with the capacitor collecting that charge and discharging it once per revolution into the driving battery that would be in my opinion a much more effective method for organizing this particular circuit but I leave you to make up your own mind on that and I wish you well if you decide to test this circuit out it is an interesting circuit